Hello, welcome to, I've done it again, done it again. It's Sunday the 20th of February, 2022. I am back outside Let Forum in uh, sunny Withenshaw. Hottest day of the year, sunniest day of the year in Manchester. Back for another training session with Manchester Baseball Club. Let's turn these wipers off. Oh, that's an indicator. The apocalypse is happening, all the wind and rain. Like I say, all the people down south have been told to stay indoors, don't travel, and up here in the north, we've been told to wear a big coat. As a little recap, been happy and impressed with something that I've got given. Right, here we go. Ripping the women's baseball tee, which all evil ink is where you can get yours. It's in two minds whether not to wear this for training because it's lovely, and I thought I could wear this when I'm doing my interviews, like a best shirt, or do I wear it for training and spread love? And I thought, well, I can always buy more. So this week, been a bit slack on the bands and arm work. Uh, it's been really busy at work and just had lots of stuff to do at home. Uh, taking up some drawing, which you may or may not have seen, and uh, with charcoals, which I've been really enjoying. It's been quite therapeutic, so I'm now looking for more subjects to, to draw. And I've got some in my mind that I want to do. So I've been quite inspired by Andy Brown and, and Tom Pringle with their fantastic artwork. And my dad being a, a fantastic drawer as well. He's been teaching me the, the ropes, so it's been lots of fun. Baseball wise, again, not really had time to do much strength and conditioning. Diet again has gone a bit pear-shaped, which is probably fair to say. Had a, a nice night last night and little and stayed over at his grandma's, which is weird waking up at eight o'clock this morning with a half decent night's sleep, which has probably made me feel a bit bit worse than usual. So not had much time to play with him today, but we've had a lot of Lego action this morning. So I'm gonna try and stay for as long as possible here and not be in a rush to get back home, but it's probably not nice for me anyway, it's too busy. Playing Lego and Ninjago. Uh, not a sponsor, but if, if you want to sponsor, you'd make me the best dad in the world. So let's see what we've got in store. I'm hopefully going to get some interviews with some people that are training. Asking the question, what is a successful training session to you? So I'll be really interested to hear from uh, coaches out there and players on what your opinion are, opinions are on what m makes a successful training session. And from a sort of playing point of view as well, what makes you think that you've had a great training session? How how do you feel when you come away from your session? So I'll catch you on the other side of this video. Hi, I'm David Gould, uh, manager of Manchester Bees and assistant coach. Uh, good training session. I think it's different depending what your approach is, but it's working on good mechanics to do the right thing. It's no point doing training, preparation, you're going to do it sloppy and just pass the time. If you're going to do it, you've got to do it right. That's the most important thing to me, and to see improvements, especially in new players who listen to you, perhaps more than some of the players who've been playing for quite a while, who think they already know it all. Um, good training will have to be keep you moving. Um, either learn or develop a skill uh, on everything um, just be one that keeps you active and keeps you learning well you've uh, worked on something like you've got some work you got a little bit smoother from the last time you did it uh, for me it's about getting in the reps loosening everything up obviously in the middle of the season you're not going to improve mechanics and things. There's an opportunity to try and work out some bugs really. Thank you, Thank you very much. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think a successful training session includes communication, um, teamwork, um, collaborating with each other, and doing a variety of exercises that helps with your conditioning and your skill set that's going to apply to your baseball on the field. And also to teach competitiveness and good moral ethics as well. Uh, as long as it's a good mix of everything really, it needs to be a little bit of running, a little bit of conditioning maybe, but I like to do a lot of throwing and a lot of glove work as well. I think it's going to be individual from person to person. For me, it's where I can see where I've made a mistake in the previous week. Um, let's say this week, my gap has begun to dip off a little bit towards the end, 
like I'll notice that and then next week I'll just make an extra effort to be able to sort of recognise the fault and then the next week you can sort of make an extra effort to maintain the concentration, maintain the mental focus and then I'd measure the success as if next week I'm smashing it in and out, in and out. And I think it's obviously different person to person, task to task, but um, I think for me from this week that's my goal. Uh, what does a successful training session look like? I think it uh, comprises um, a lot of hustle. So you've got to got to work for it, move, move towards the ball. One of the things, you know what I mean? Um, when you're at bat, just keep your eye on the ball. Um, and those basics, always moving, uh, is really, really important. Uh, I'd say the second bit would be listening to coach and listening to your colleagues, your, you know, your friends. Um, you can pick up some really nice tips. For me, my training sessions, I want to keep people moving all the time. Because although in the game it gets a little bit, you don't have tons of movement. In training sessions, because I want us to be fitter uh, and get the skills down, we actually like to rotate all the time. That's, that's what I like to do. I also don't like to do the same things all the time, if we can help it. Uh, although some of the skills are exactly the same, if we can change that style uh, and change the actual drill we're doing, it might be for the same thing, but if we can change it, to me, people don't feel like they're just doing the same thing and it gets a bit boring. So to me, a successful training session is about people's enjoyment, getting a proper workout and moving around as much as they can. So that was a cracking training session. I don't know if you can hear that over the rain, but the car next to me is banging out, take on me. I had a really good session. Some uh, long toss drills, doing some fielding drills. Uh, it was just really good fun today. Had a great time. Uh, thank you to everyone that contributed for the questions of what does a successful training session look like and how do you measure your success within the training session. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on it as well. I think I set myself quite a high about maybe too high sometimes. I beat myself up over it quite a lot on how well I should be doing compared. Well, when I, especially when I see some of the, the younger ones, like the, the nine year olds and the 15 year olds that are just incredible. And I think I, I wish I could do that. But I just, I just want to be a good teammate and be able to give it my all and not let anyone down when it comes down to game day. I train as if it's a game environment. I don't like to half ass it, if that makes any sense. I don't want to just take a ground ball and gently throw it back onto it to be like it's a game environment. So when it comes down to game day, I'm prepared for it and ready. I think if I've learned from mistakes as well each week and build upon what I've already got, the more consistent I get, that's how I'm measuring my success at the moment. Uh, if I come away feeling unhappy, I know within myself that I've not done everything that I, I could have done. I want to give it my all and leave it all in there. And I measure my success week on week on how well I've improved and noticing the subtle changes in what I keep getting wrong in my errors. The less errors that I do, in my opinion, the better for me. Thanks again for listening and for listening to my waffle. I'm off now for pizza. I know I'm not doing the bread thing, but it's a flat bread. I'm going to trial and error, see what happens. I know it's on my head, so I might wake up tomorrow with a stomach hangover. Fun and games. All right, take care, everyone, and I'll chat to you all soon. Ciao. I've never touched on it before as well, but again, big, big shout, big thanks to Doris for the t-shirt and uh, to Lee, Lee Wright over in Australia for the batting gloves. Send me a set of pink marigolds for some bizarre reason. Said they were really good for him when he was doing his hitting. I don't know if he's playing my leg as a bit of a joker, but uh, cheers, Lee Wright. Cheers, Doris. Um, really appreciate it. Right, and that's it. Take it easy, folks. See you next week.